Hi, my name is Jonathan Phillips and I work at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, also known as NIST. Um, I work in the, in the image group, which is the Information Technology Lab. Our group is primarily focused on biometrics and evaluating biometrics. Personally, my main area of interest and concentration for 20 years has been in face recognition. Um, I started when face recognition was just out of the lab with just promise, and over the last 20 years we've seen it mature to the point of now where you can search large mug, mugshot databases and get highly accuracy when searching databases of a million plus mugshots. We have a large number of partners in the, in the government. Um, in the past we've worked with, with DARPA, we've worked with IARPA, we've worked with the FBI, the Department of, the Department of Justice, and the Department of Homeland Security on these projects. The goal is to do the evaluation and help them understand and develop the technology to meet their needs. Face recognition is, is a, is a multidisciplinary um, field of research. There's the classic pattern recognition or uh, machine learning where you have to match the pattern and code of face so a machine understands it and then be able to search a large amount of space. There's also computer graphics involved in the sense how do you rotate faces to a frontal to keep um, the features constant so you can then recognize it. And lastly, since he, he, all humans recognize faces and there are forensic examiners and there are cops who do that, it's the psychology of how we recognize faces. Here we want, we want to know whether or not algorithms are be, doing better than humans or just as importantly how we would fuse an algorithm, an algorithm together with a human to improve performance over both systems. Humans are very good at recognizing people they know. If I showed you a picture of Barack Obama, you would instantly know who that was. But we're not interested in recognizing famous people or familiar people. We're interested in recognizing people we've never seen before, comparing people. So therefore, human perception of how of the level of performance necessary is biased by the fact we can accurately recognize people we know. But if you were to try doing performance, comparing yourself, recognizing people acquired it, in uncontrolled situations, as you would have uh, people you don't know, you would not be nearly you'd not be nearly as good. In fact, with the research we've done, we found for frontal faces that machines are better than humans over a very wide variety of conditions. Over the last 20 years, I've worked in face recognition. Um, we do standardized evaluations, and the latest evaluation we published from NIST showed that, given a database of 1.6 million mugshots, we can retrieve the top rank out of that about 93% of the time, which in itself is astounding. So this is a case of where that if we do have mug shots taken under controlled lighting that is full frontal, we can search very large databases an order of millions very accurately. However, when you move away from these con ideal con these conditions and mug shots, performance starts to degrade. There are three, three avenues that have spurred the improvement in technology over the last 20 years. First has been faster and cheaper and better computers. You can now do more complex matching, matching in a short period of time. The other has been in the camera technology itself. When we started out, half when we started out, half a megapixels was a lot of images. A lot of was a very large image. Now we can regularly take images that are six megapixels, ten megapixels, and get high quality, high fidelity images. So the com combination of of Better, better, imagery, better imagery, higher quality imagery has allowed better matching. Faster computers has allowed the development of more sophisticated algorithms to operate on these better imagery. So it's all three together that has helped spur the improvement of face recognition over the last two decades. It's been widely documented in the psychological literature that, um, that you have a harder time recognizing people of a different race than your own. So one of the studies I did with Professor Alice O'Toole at UT University of Texas at Dallas a couple years ago is during one of the evaluations we had algorithms submitted from East Asia and algorithms submitted from North America and Europe. And we actually did a test where we, we measured the performance of the East Asian algorithms on East Asians, Caucasians, and the, West, North, the Western algorithms on the same data set and we found an other race effect for algorithms themselves. Um, we don't know the cause of it. Um, could be the training sets people use. Could be the fact that when you design algorithms, zero of the algorithms you're used to looking at faces your own race. But we did find this was a um, a definite effect. The point is, we discovered this about f five years ago. Since then, there has been a concerted effort um, for people use the, use these 
algorithms to acknowledge this exists and make sure that from an operational point of view, it does not affect how they process people. Probably the bit office goes the the area, the, the two areas I think of are of particular interest to me. One is more for the pure computer vision or engineering side of you is developing algorithms to efficiently process video. The other is that, that I've been concentrating on is, is, is one can say, what's the most robust face recognition system out there? Well, it's humans. We recognize people very easily over a wide range of conditions. We're used to, we know how to integrate information from both the face, the body, the shape of the head, and other information to an effective algorithm. The other challenge I see that could be addressed would be developing facial recognition algorithms that surpass or equal humans on a wide range of robustness issues. I do not think facial recognition will be ever as, as accurate as, for example, as fingerprints or if you have two irises. But the other thing to make when you make the comparison is to remember that fingerprints and irises are taken under controlled conditions. Whereas face recognition, we want to operate ideally under a large number of uncontrolled conditions. So in some sense, the strengths of face are different than the strengths of the other modalities.